All I'm now supports structured outputs, making it possible for you to constrain a model's output that you generate maybe a response from to a specific format defined by a JSON schema. So what exactly does this mean for your day-to-day -day development, especially using local models from Olama? And how can you get started on it today? So in this video, I'm going to go over that and let's get straight to it. Blog that was released announcing this new changes that they added to Olama, which is really cool. And this was released on December 6th. So, and as, it, as, as I mentioned here, it really helps you constrain the output that comes from the model. So essentially, typically when you chat with a model, it gives you output usually that's not super structured or sometimes it is structured, sometimes it's not, but maybe you just want it to be really organized in a specific format. You can use this by Dantic models and the JSON output to actually make sure that the output's exactly the way you want it, all that, like each time you interact with it, for example. So, uh, and some of the use cases here of like why you should care even trying using this is, uh, you know, parsing data from documents. So if you have a document like a PDF or, or even images and you want to extract specific information from that image, then you want it structured and maybe in, maybe it's receipts and you want all the receipts to be in JSON, for example, and strict JSON format, right? You can define these models using Pydantic that actually parses through the, the document. It could be, for example, using the vision model, like Lama, Lama 3.2 vision model, looks at the image, maybe a receipt, and extracts all the details from it and verifies using your Pydantic defined models already and out make sure that the data corresponds to that and it outputs it in JSON format. So it's really helpful. I've tried it a lot with AI agents and it works amazing. Real quick, let's just get to the code and actually you can see a full example of how this works. So in my code here, I have uh, three files, which I'm using it differently as examples. The first one is country, which is more of like a basic example that we'll go through and how to, to do this. And then we have one for art critic. So given a, you know, a few art pieces, uh, images, it should go ahead and do some critiquing on that, on those images and give us a full critique. So we'll define what the models or identical models would look like, especially what we need it to look. So we will need a vision model to do this uh, critiquing for us. And then we'll finally get a, a full report on the critique. So first of all, let's start with the country.py file. So here, just walking through this example. So I'm just going to make my page a little bigger so you can see it on your side. So here we're importing uh, Pydantic. So from Pydantic, we're imp importing the base model, which is what we will need to create the Pydantic models. And then also from Olama, we're importing chat. This will allow us to chat with, uh, with a model. And so here on step one, we have defining the Pydantic model that we need to use here. So country here, we'll pass in the name of a country, just like the one they had with Canada. Uh, but from when we pass a specific country name, we should extract the name. It should have the capital. It should have the official languages, the currency, the population, the continent, uh, the borders, which is essentially the neighbors for the country, the time zones that are available within that country, and also the region where that country is located at. So pretty interesting information there from our model. So that's our entire model right there. And now when we come to the chat portion, so which is step two, we would need to send the chat request uh, with the defined schema that we just defined up here to Olama to be able to get the response. So here I'm just using the walrus sign here from Python, it's just, instead of creating a variable for country name and then passing it over, it's just one step uh, run there. So if country name, uh, then the input of the country name, which will prompt you to enter the country name in the, in the terminal when we run it, uh, if there's a country name, then it should pass that to this function here with a chat. And we're using Llama 3.2, which I have locally. And then the messages here, role user, and then the content here, I'm just saying, tell me about the country name. So you pass in the country name, it should tell you more about that country. And then we just, on the format section here, of course, we're passing in our uh, model, Pydantic model that we just defined up here. We're passing that here. So that way, when it generates the output, it should also make sure that it conforms to the model that we've defined. We want it to structure the data to, according to the, the way we define a model. So step three here, we'll be printing out whatever it's gone ahead and extracted from that country and actually parsed it the way we want it to. So we should print that out on the terminal. And then what I'm doing here is an extra step. I'm just creating a folder output and I want to save uh, that file in there for each country that I generate. So that way I can go look over, look over it uh, afterwards. So let's just go ahead and run this. So I'm going to open my terminal here and I'm going to do Python and then we're going to run in the country. 
country file that pi so we hit that run so it's already asking me to enter a country name so i'm gonna enter kenya which is a country that i'm originally from and so this will take a minute here because the model might need to warm up first uh, or boot up but it's done now so that was pretty quick so here we have country name as you can see structure i did kenya nairobi is the capital city official language english and swahili currency kenya shillings population 52 000, 52,800,000. this seems very wrong because it can be just that accurate with all those zeros but it's a good approximation i think it's about 54 correct me if i'm wrong is somebody from kenya but continent africa borders ethiopia sudan south sudan well that's not all the countries but i mean you got a few right the model is hallucinating a little bit but at least it's putting it in the structure that we need it to put it in and then the time zone there east african time zone east african time zone dst and then region east africa so that should be correct um as the model could be so here let's look at the output which is already in here and since it's not structured the way we need to it's not formatted desired so we just option shift f if you're on a mac and it should show you all the data now structured correctly in json so you'll see the json here and this is how it outputs the data and this is what we want so if you want to use this data afterwards like it's already structured the way you need it so we'll always output the way you need it and this is the the power of having that pedantic model so pretty cool pretty quick now that's done. So let's go ahead and delete this because we'll need that. You will use that folder again. So let's come here to the art critic uh, example that I have here. So this is a little more advanced, not you know, compared to the one that we just did. So for this, it's really an it analyzes images. So let's look at the regular stuff the way we're importing it. So we're importing the typing, of course, there because we want to enforce some typing enforcement in it, uh, which we'll use in our Pydantic models here. And then, of course, we're still importing the base model here from Pydantic to help us uh, create these Pydantic models. And then Olama, and then argument parse here. And this is just a command line to allow us to enter stuff within the command line. And then the OS, which will allow us to save files within our system. Uh, and this is the specific use case we're using this for. So our first Pydantic model here is composition. And so I'm not an art person or... I'm not an artist, let me say that. So if you're an artist out there, um, this is the best I could come up with with the help of um, uh, Sonnet, uh, which did help me a lot in kind of figuring out what composition is, what artistic techniques I should be looking for in terms of basically critiquing the art that I give it. Uh, essentially, I wanted to grade it based on some of these features. So first of all, is the composition. So we have dominant lines, horizontal, vertical, diagonal, and then focal points, balance type, symmetrical, depth technique, and then artistic technique, which is a little different, which is medium, brush techniques, texture style, you know, you get it. And then the color analysis, um, you know, palette, harmony, mood, light source, uh, emotional impact, um, narrative. Uh, yeah, most of this stuff is foreign to me, but I really enjoy looking at it, um, and it seems to make sense. And probably should be paying attention to art more than I than I am. And then we have artwork analysis, which is the final model here, which kind of combines almost all of the stuff that we've done up here and kind of creates a full uh, analysis itself. So we have the title, and then we have the composition, technique, colors, emotional impact, estimated period, artistic movement, and overall impression. So pretty cool. So those are the models. Now we get to the point where we actually, you know, pass it to our chat model so we are able to chat with 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 the image and get like a or passing the image and get a analysis on some of these images that we pass into it so here we have the analyze artwork function which basically takes in an image path and it's going to do some analysis on that image and give you results uh based on what it, what's what it's what it sees and as you guessed it probably here we have using uh, we're using Llama 3.2 vision model to do that. So we pass the image to, vision, to Llama 3.2 vision. It's going to look at it based on our criteria, of course, determine if you know what the you basically judge the image and give us the output the judgment. And then uh, and here we have the messages here, and this is what we will follow from our content. So analyze this artwork as an art, as a critic would focus on composition elements. Technical aspect, call analysis, emotional impact, artistic period, movement, characteristics, and all that. And then we're passing the image path for that image specifically. And then I set the temperature to 0 0.2. You can play with this a little bit more. If you put it a little higher, it's going to elucidate more or just 
become really too creative in a sense. If you put zero, then you really minimize the, you know, make it a little more deterministic in a sense. To run it, here's how we run it, pass it in there, like we did with the previous one, and then extract the content from there. So once that's done, we want to be able to save the the final, like the analysis that generates, which should be in JSON format. We want to have that saved so we can look at it. And then the next stage is just kind of parsing through that entire analysis and printing out each section and making it look pretty essentially for us to be able to read it in a nice format. So that's what I've done here. And so it's just really outputting it on the terminal so we can read it and see exactly what it does here. And then finally outputting that result there. And in this one, you can pass an individual file or an individual artwork and then get criticized on that one piece of artwork. But what I decided to do was more, well, it's not cool to just do one at a time. Why not do a comparison, right? And this is what I did up here. Basically, this acted as modules and I just imported them here. And once I imported them, uh, what happened here is I'm comparing the artwork. So I'm able to give it a, a folder. For example, here we have, uh, if we're doing this. So in this artwork samples, I have three files. I have Mona Lisa, Starry Night, and the screen. So these are artworks. So if you look at Mona Lisa and then Starry Night by Van Gogh and then Scream. So those are my three artworks that I chose. So here I'm just going to compare all of them and it's going to do analysis uh, based on the critic here. It's going to do like an individual, but it's going to compare all of them together. So this is pretty cool. So it's going to get, you know, compare all the artworks, it's going to take a link and then compare multiple artworks and display a summary table. And that's exactly what I'm doing here, just displaying a summary table of all of them so I can look at them uh, side by side. So let's go ahead and run this and see what it will output for us. And the goal here is really for it to follow Pydantic, uh, the py use Pydantic models to make the output more um, structured. So Python, compare artworks, run. So as well, this will take a little while and I'll cut back to the point where it's finished and we'll be live. All right, so after several minutes and we finally have a result. So let's look at it. So here you'll see it ran analyzing Starry Night, Mona Lisa and the Scream. So it did analyze exactly what we need. Now, if we look at the AdWord comparison here, it did a comparison. I definitely need to verify this years and numbers um, just because. Uh, but let's look at, let's assume they're right for now. You know, we'll do verification after. So peri period, uh, Starry Night, 1889, Mona Lisa, 1503 to 1517, and then the Scream, 1893. So pretty interesting, right? So we have style, expressive, realism, impressionist, dominant lines, curved, horizontal, diagonal, and then primary emotion, serenity, misery, anxiety, which I think it got that correctly. and then. Color, harmony, contrasting, monochromatic, clashing, and then mood, melancholic, uh, serene, and anxiety. That's I think that's pretty accurate. So now it does a detailed analysis of each of the art. So first of all, it's Starry Night, and it says the title is The Starry Night. Period is 1889. Movement was post-impressionism. Uh, pro oh, post-impressionism. Yeah, you can tell I'm not. I didn't take any art classes. Um, and then composition. We have lines, curved, focal points, starry night, balance, symmetrical, and depth, atmospheric uh, perspective. So we have technique there as well, oil and canvas, impasto. So pretty cool, right? You can see it's structured it pretty well. And then color analysis, we have the color analysis there, emotional impact. And then we have the overall impression, hauntingly beautiful. And that is what is referring to the starry night so let's look at the starry night so this is the starry night so van gogh so looks pretty good i think that captures it um exactly as it is so it's hauntingly beautiful and it is now let's move to mona lisa so let's look at the analysis it did in mona lisa so if you're not familiar with mona lisa that is mona lisa and so look let's look at the critique analysis that it created here. So Mona Lisa there, it gives us the time and the movement is Renaissance, composition, subject's eyes is a focal point and we have the balance there. Uh, let's look at the technique, oil on canvas, dry brush, um, and then color, gold black. I think I see gold black in there. How many more chromatic, serene, natural. And then looks uh, emotional impact, wealth, power. 
Oh, interesting. Italian Renaissance. And then if we look at overall impression here, it says a masterpiece of the Italian Renaissance. This painting is a testament of Leonardo da Vinci's skill and artistry. The use of monochromatic colors creates a sense of serenity while subject's eyes draw the viewer in. The composition is symmetrical with atmospheric perspective adding depth to the scene. The overall effect is one of mystery and and power making this painting a true masterpiece yep sounds about right all right let's look at the last one which is the scream now let me pull up the scream here it is that's the scream it's a little haunting a little scary uh, in a sense <laughs> but let's look at that so the scream 1893 expressionism and um the screaming figure that's the focal point of the, of, of the art and then we have the overall impression here, anxiety inducing and unsettling. I mean, that is right. If you look at that, you feel anxious and very unsettled because somebody's screaming and they're making all the, yeah, it just doesn't, you know, I, think that, I think you got that right. So that's just beside the point. But at the end of the day, I think the important piece here is it did structure it the way we wanted to. And we can actually look at the analysis of how it did this. And so let's do again, option shift, F on Mac and then save the file. And here we'll be able to see the full JSON. And this is the exact JSON that it generated. So for example, this is the screen and it generated and then uh, the, the exact examples and the entire kind of file generated like that. So this is pretty cool. So the gist of me going over this is really to show you why you need to start using structured output in your LLMs uh, to generate exactly consistent output that you need and also within your AI agents. So stay tuned for more information or for more videos like this. And uh, please don't forget to subscribe as well. And see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.